This is the Coach's Wife Life Podcast. I'm Kristen Ergel, your host, a former TV sports reporter and fellow college football coach's wife. I'll go one-on-one with the strong women who are the backbone of college athletics and athletics of all levels. And now, Coach's Wife Life. This podcast is brought to you by Ruler of Hope. Ruler of Hope is a nonprofit that supports medically fragile children. If you'd like to make a tax deductible donation, you can use Venmo at Ruler Hope or online at rulerofhope.org. Hey there, I'm Chris Nerlon. We have an exciting podcast ahead. But first, I want to talk about something we all know way too much about moving. Just the thought of that can bring an unsettling emotion. Well, I found a team that can take that load off your plate. It's D1 Relocation. This group can do it all. They can organize your move, coordinate with a moving company, and a trusted real estate agent. They can actually vet key household partners, such as schools, insurance agents, physicians in the area. They can even help set up your Wi-Fi and water. It's incredible. So I've come to know this team, which is actually founded by a coach's wife. I think you should check it out. Whether you're looking to move now or in the future, it's d1relocation.com. Now on to our awesome podcast. It's my honor to bring Tracy Nooner on the podcast. Tracy is the wife of Terry Nooner, head women's basketball coach in Wichita State. Thanks for being a part of us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You guys were recently announced as the head coach there. Prior to that, a decade's worth of coaching on the FBS level and Division I, most recently as associate head coach at the University of Kansas. You've been an integral part of that return to glory there with the 2023 WNIT title, and you've spent time with the University of Texas, Maryland, Alabama, among other places. When you think about the resume, and, and you've actually just gotten experience all this being announced in the press conference and all that. You know, there's a lot of things that are written about your head, your husband as a head coach. Mm-hmm. But from your perspective, what do you think makes him special? Um, I think he's just really good at connecting with people and building relationships, like with players, with other coaches, with um, just people in general. And so he has a really good does a really good job of kind of like knowing people for who they are and and able to build relationships with them. And he loves building relationships with people. Um, He's still in contact with many players that he coached at the AAU level. He still keeps in contact with them. So I think that's one of the greatest aspects of him and becoming a, being a good coach. And where did y'all meet? Where did you grow up? Uh, I hear you're from right there in Kansas. Did you ever see yourself as a coach's wife? Well, the funny thing is we met at KU. We both went to school there. He actually played for Roy Williams. And I was a freshman, I believe. And we met actually at a women's basketball house party. That's where we met at (laughs) the KU women's basketball house party. So that's where we met. He says I was staring at him. I say he was staring at me. So who knows how that went for real. That's where we initially met. And we actually were friends for a while before we took it to like boyfriend, girlfriend. So we met there and I didn't think I'd be a coach's wife. He actually had no desire to coach. He actually had an opportunity to coach um, or be a grad assistant with Roy Williams. He turned it down because he was like, no, I see all the stress you go through. I'm not trying to be a coach. I don't want to do it. So I didn't really think I was going to be a coach's wife at first. Wow, that is fascinating. So you met in college and then fast forward to now, that's many years later. How many kids do you work now? Give us all the details. Okay, I have three children, 11-year-old daughter, Taryn, 8-year-old son, Terry III, and my 4-year-old daughter, Tatum. I actually homeschooled them them all. Well, well, no, Tatum goes to pre-K. So she just started pre-K this year, and she loves it. Um, I've been homeschooling for about five years now. So I have my son since kindergarten, and then Taryn, I've had her since first grade. So that's that's my job. (laughs) Well, definitely. And so you've been homeschooling before it became trendy with, you know, COVID and all of that. Yeah. yeah. Has it worked well for you in terms of when you move and things like that? You're not sitting there really worried about a school district, I would imagine. Well, right. that's the main reason I decided to, like even before COVID broke out, was because how much you were moving. So at least I would know where they're at. We wouldn't have to worry about 
what level they were on at this school or that school. And we were moving so much, you know, just trying to have one thing that was consistent for them. Wow, that's good. Okay, so this past April was dream accomplished for your family, getting the head women's basketball coaching job right there at Wichita State. You're from Kansas. It had to be a job you're like, if this one were to come open, wow, would this be a dream? So kind of walk me through the process. Uh, when you thought it might could happen, you're getting an interview. Take me through it. Well, the process, it actually went fast. Um, we were kind of shocked about that. He got an email saying that he was a candidate for the position and asked if he was interested. And so that was the first step. So, of course, we're like, yeah, we're interested. Yeah. <laughs> and so the next step was a um, a Zoom call with the athletic director. And so he had the Zoom call. And actually, me and my children were on the call also, just briefly. So he introduced us to the him as his team. And that. so I got to introduce myself and the kids, and then we were gone after that. And so the first Zoom call he had was about 30 minutes long. He actually thought he didn't do as well, because at the time, his um, dad was um, kind of on his deathbed at the time. Mm -hmm. He was in hospice, and so he had a lot on his mind just going through that. And so he didn't think he did well at all. And so he was kind of down on himself. I'm like, we'll see. You know, they're going to call you back. Mm -hmm. And they did call him back. And there was a next Zoom call that was like two and a half hours. Oh. It was, yes. It was like two and a half hours. He actually did that call in Kansas City. because That's where his dad was at, at his sister's house. And so after that, there was one more call. And so that's when they offered him the position. Wow. And yeah. so you're getting the job, you're excited. And then you're sitting there like, okay, he's probably got a report pretty soon, right? Right. Very soon. And then the press conference, right? Yes, it was fast because on the call, they offered him a position and they're like, we're going to move fast. We want you down here next week. And we're like, what? <laughs> and so they flew us down. We, um, his sister came, his, oh, his sister, she's my age, and his younger sister came also. And his stepdad was there. So that was nice at the press conference. Um, he kind of got choked up also at the press conference a little bit. I was like, he started talking about me and thanking me for, you know, being supportive and started, had a little tear. And I was like, oh, because he didn't even cry at our wedding. I'm like, oh, now you want to cry? <laughs> and so he made a little joke about that. He was like, okay, now you got me. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Okay. How did you pick out the outfits if it was that fast? Yes. Yeah, so Amazon, <laughs> Amazon for me. <laughs> So we got have yellow and the black, and we have black for the kids. We figured that was easy, an easy color. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Amazon is outfitting these press conferences. Yes. I have now picked up on the fact that Amazon is the <laughs> outfitter for head coaching positions. They're all the all the kids are just head to toe Amazon. I love it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So when you think about you know the press conference day is is one of those you'll probably remember the rest of your life, uh, but not every day is quite that impressive and fun. So has there been adversity that you have gone through together as a couple? And what do you rely on to get through those moments? Um, I think the biggest would be just all the moving, especially we went through a stretch where we went from Maryland to Ohio. My husband got a position as a player development coach with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Wow. And so we got there like in June, July, or, and then the coach there, his friend Teron Lou, ended up they ended up releasing him from his contract mm -hmm. in October. And I was pregnant at the time, also with my daughter Tatum. And so it was just crazy. We we're like, oh my goodness. So we were like, okay, good thing like the contract was through the year, so it wasn't like you know you're cut off right there. <laughs> so we didn't know what we we're gonna do, and so. We just kind of prayed about it. We do rely on our faith. We're both Christians, believe in Jesus Christ. And so we relied on our faith a lot just through this whole journey, not just coaching, but just marriage and life in general. That's what's helped us through all the transitions. 
Yeah. And that especially is a tough time. You're pregnant. I know that those are listening have been through that before. I've been through that one. Uh, that has to be the hardest time to lose your job. I mean, if you think about it, like you, you got to get insurance. Where am I having this baby? Um, definitely a time you dig deep in your faith. And, and what, I mean, has it changed you to walk through those types of moments? It has. Like, that was a pretty hard time for us. Well, for me in particular, just thinking about, like, what's next? What's going to happen? Like, he was ready to just go back to doing coaching with AAU. You know, he was getting his plan, you know, training people. And um, he got offered a position at Texas just out of nowhere. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, I know I can trust you in this situation. Sometimes we kind of forget, even though he's always done stuff for us (laughs) before in the past. But he got his position at Texas. And we were there for a year and then they let that coach go. Oh, wow. Yes. So this time I was like, okay, I, I wasn't, I was more so prepared that time. I'm like, if you can do it once, you can do it again. And so that's when the position at Kansas opened up for him to go there. And talk about the dynamic of coaching women's basketball. Obviously he's with the Cavaliers and men's NBA team uh, and the decision to go into women's and, and work with women. And then obviously you're a part of that as well. So talk about that transition back and, and how has that been? Yeah, he's always enjoyed working with women. Um, he thought it would be good for his resume to help like, work in the NBA, yeah. to help him to be a head coach. That's why he went and also an opportunity to work with his best friend, so that's why he decided to be a player development coach. But he's always enjoyed working with girls since he started his AAU program at the sixth grade level and on the way up to college. So that's one of his passions. And through all the moves that you've had, very quick moves at times sometimes, <laughs> what have you made a priority in your life to kind of be that steady? Um, I would think just not besides my faith, just getting uh, my faith in God and just trying to make sure we're all connected as a family, um, trying to make sure we do things together. We try to get connected in the community if we can. Um, in the beginning, I did find it hard connecting when we moved places since we would move so fast. So sometimes I was kind of apprehensive about like reaching out and like developing relationships with people. But usually I always have like one person like that I really connected with. So that helped a lot. So making sure we're all connected and getting around people and joining the community. You've moved a lot. So have do you have any moving tips for the rest of us that there's some, of course, we're, the, we're about to hit that football transition time. So anyone out there, what would you, what would you advise from that perspective? I think like I know in education, I, I used to be an educator and we always would joke and say the constant thing in education has changed. And so the same thing, I think, with moving. Like, you never know what's going to happen with your schedules, um, with your moving companies. So just be prepared. It might not go as planned. So just be ready for that. <laughs> Definitely. What are some of the things? We talked about it before we started recording, which is how hard it is to get a head coaching job in the FBS level. Yeah. <laughs> they don't just hand those out. They're really hard to call um, by. Um, and I, and I, I would imagine if I had him on the podcast, he would give you credit for, as a family, your success as a family and driving towards that. Is there anything from a practical perspective that you think has really helped him have this level of success? I think just his work ethic and his ability to, like I said, connect with the players. He's worked with a lot of good players and helped develop them. And he's good at just connecting with people at different levels, at different institutions. And he um, he's known for like being like an overachiever. And so I think that's helped him also. I know he's had the goal of being a head coach. And even though sometimes he would get passed by, he would get a little bit, you know, down, but he didn't stay there. He would just rely on his faith. He knew when his time would come, it would come. And what God had for him was for him. Okay. So you're deflecting. You've got to tell us some things that you're doing to help this process. Oh, what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just like relying on my faith and just kind of um, help keeping him motivated and just being a listening ear we try to keep things, you know, at home. We try to like work on our marriage because that's a huge, um, I would say it's a huge factor in coaching, keeping your marriage together. (laughs) Things like, you know, we have tried to do date nights. Um, 
when we can, it's hard, especially when you don't have family in town. Right. So just we try to do at least once a month date nights where we connect together and then we also like connecting up with the family as a whole we do things for the kids also and then we're kind of walking through this season uh you're in the basketball season and you've just taken a new job and so you're in that fun exciting piece of this you know this section of time but there are wives watching this right now who are about to kind of go through some uncertainty um it, how do you, and, and, you know, sometimes you just get passed up for jobs and you don't really know what they're, what they were looking for. And, you know, you're capable of, of getting that job and being successful there. How do you keep your husband, your spouse encouraged through those moments when your time is not yet for that particular role? Yeah. Kind of just reminding him, like, you know, like you're good, you're, you're ready for this, you know, when your time comes, it'll come. And just reminding him, my husband made a list of things that he was looking for in his first head coaching job. And so just reminding him of those things that he's looking for, like asking him, you know, are these things on the list of these schools who, you know, that's open now, you know, even though you didn't get this position, but all the qualities that you're looking for weren't at this institution. So just kind of reminding him of his vision and his goals and being supportive. And coaching women's basketball, how do you think it differs from coaching other sports, men's basketball or football or some of the other sports that are there? What what are some of the unique aspects? Um, I'm not so sure if it's different. Like my husband always says, like a competitor is a competitor. Like kids, they just want to win. And so they want to know that you're knowledgeable of the sport and that you can help them get to the level that they want that they want to get to. Do you have involvement with the players? I do. Um even when at KU or other positions, I would like to make them banana pudding. So they love my banana pudding. Usually when we have recruits over or something, I'd make banana pudding. They look forward to that. Or sometimes they might ask for some for themselves. <laughs> so I try to do little things um, on the holidays, just for Halloween. Like we got some little Halloween cookies for them, little like pumpkins or ghosts, just stuff like that to make them feel special. Yeah. Make them feel included for sure. So through the process, do you have a coach's wife mentor or just a good friend, somebody, a tribe that you call on those tough days? I don't have a coach's wife mentor, but I do have like a spiritual mentor. And her name is Cheryl Cheadle. She actually has two daughters who played at the division one level in volleyball, one in volleyball and one in basketball. And she played herself. So I think she knows about, you know, the life of a player. So she also helps me as far as uh, my spiritual life. Hugely important. Yeah. So now that you're a head coach's wife, you've got to be excited about, you know, and the, and the basketball staff is not as, as large as football staff, yeah. we have like 20 or 30 people involved. But what kind of things are you sort of looking forward to being able to do now that you're a head coach's wife? Well, that's what I've been thinking about. Like we have um, an assistant coach's wife. Her name is Brittany Bradford. And they have a son. He is a junior in high school. So it's a little bit of different family dynamic. I have the little one. She has an older one. Right, right. And so we try to connect and get together. Um, we just, it's kind of hard to get together right now, but we usually try to go to practice. We connect there or we um, do things for the players together. But I think I just want to make sure like, I want them to feel like included. And if they had any questions, I um, want to be there for them. This is the first year, well, not my first year, a few years. Most, when I first started out, I think I might've been like the only wife like <laughs> on the staff. Yeah. So at KU, uh, Coach Brandon's wife, Allie, she um, kind of took me in, you know, her she homeschooled at the time also. So she always gave me lots of resources. Um, their house is always open to us or the players. And so that was helpful kind of see her, seeing her in that role. Definitely. Are there some homeschool families where you are? I mean, have you been able to connect yet with anyone else? We have a little bit. Um, yeah. We go to an art class with some other homeschool families and a science class. And that's on Thursdays, but we haven't really got out much in the homeschool community yet here. Have you found many coaching families that are homeschooling now? Um, just when I was at KU, um, Allie was, is homeschooling her children and some other people in the athletic department were homeschooling. Oh, 
Oh, very cool. Um, you already talked about some of the practical ways that you reach out to the players, um, you know, with different treats you make. Is there anything else that you do that you think has kind of made a difference in the way that he's able to connect with them? Uh, well, I try to, you know, tell them happy birthday or any special event they're having, make sure I acknowledge that. Um, I try to connect with them during the games or after the games to see how they're doing, um, tell them they did a good job, or the ones who I know, you know, kind of feeling down on myself, trying to give them some encouragement. Yeah, definitely. Um, the, how do you, you say once a month you go on a date. Um, is that something you've kind of done all along? Do you guys get away after the season, take a little vacation, get some downtime? Yeah, we usually, um, I think we start the once a month after my son. So we only had two at that time. <laughs> Going on a date once a month. Usually we have to find a sitter um, and be able to do that once a month. We, some, it's usually been about maybe every few years we'll be able to get away in the summertime, usually in May. That's kind of downtime for him. And I would have my mom come up or the kids would go to my mom and we'd be able to go somewhere, just the two of us. You're responsible for their education, so I would imagine you don't have a lot of time to yourself. But if you do, what do you enjoy doing? Um, I like I actually like reading. I like reading. Um, I just like I like walking. I like nature. I like the warmer weather. So it's it's cooling down here. It's already cold in Kansas. My husband used to coach for the Kansas Jayhawks. So I already see all my friends on social media like bundled up, got their hats on their yeah. games. <laughs> so like the warmer weather. Yes, yes. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, you're not. I'm in Miami, so we're working 78 degrees today again. <laughs> Don't want to. Um, I'm making some enemies right now, not any fans <laughs> on the podcast. But um, last question for you What would you say are some of the most rewarding aspects to being a coach's wife? Um, I think just meeting a bunch of people and connecting with people from all walks of life. Um, that's been enjoyable for me. We still, like I said, are in contact with people from his first coaching job at SIU and all the spots we've been at. We're still in contact with players or coaches or fans. And also, I think for my kids, they enjoy traveling. So that's been really nice for them, the places they've been able to go to just through the sport of basketball. Definitely. So with homeschooling, you, your kids probably get to go to some away games. Do you guys get yeah. to travel? Yes. We'll be going to actually Oklahoma. We play OU on Monday. So we're going to be driving up there nice. on Sunday. Yes. And then how have you seen, from your perspective, you've been in this profession for years, the growth of women's basketball has to be exciting. Yes. It was very exciting. I mean, I love seeing like the players, you know, I like NIL. I know people have their opinions, but I love seeing the players, you know, getting paid for NIL deals. And I, I love seeing fans coming out to support even like volleyball, basketball, and softball. It seems like there's more fan support now and people are like excited about the sport and seeing that it is like entertaining and fun as other men's sports. Have you thought about how you're going to navigate this with your children? I know there's I always feels there's expectation when our, our kids get on some sort of travel team or something. Oh, there's the coach's kid. Have you thought about that at all? I have a little. It's more so for me because I'm like super competitive. <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm really looking for a book now to like help me <laughs> in that area <laughs> because I don't want to like push my kids too much, you know, or have too high expectations for them. Cause I know that can just like tear them down. I mean, I want them to have fun, you know, at this point they need to have fun or they're not even going to play a sport, you know? So my daughter, she's 11. She's already competitive herself. Mm -hmm. so like she's just starting out playing basketball. And so I have to tell her like, okay, you'll, you'll get there. You'll get there. She wants to do everything Angel Reese can do now. I'm like, you'll get there. <laughs> Just going where you just, you're not going to be Angel Reese coming out just starting, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Okay. All right. What's the last book you have read? The last book I've read. That's a good question because I've actually just been reading my um, children's homeschool books lately. <laughs> we were doing the Earth's crust, the layers of the crust. So that's why I was reading the science. <laughs> layers of the Earth's crust. Yeah. 
I know. Yes, that's never been said on the podcast. I will tell you that. Oh, no. <laughs> I only- love it. I love your authenticity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Coach surprises you and walks to the door with concert tickets. What's on that ticket? Oh, uh, Mary J. Blige. Oh, yes. If you could have dinner with someone that current or from history other than a family member, who is that? I think I would want to have dinner with Savannah James. I want to know like what her, what her life has been like, like a high profile husband, her kids, the fame and all that. <laughs> that would be fascinating. You get a night alone. What TV show are you binge watching? Oh my goodness. You know, we used to watch like, a lot of shows like at late nights. So I think we would have to find something to watch. That would be our goal. We haven't done that in a while. You're in a really busy season of your life. (laughs) What is your go-to meal to cook? Uh, My go-to meal would be chicken Alfredo. Very good. What sport can you beat Coach Nooner in? I would say track. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. Did you run track in high school? I did. I, for some reason, I had the bright idea to quit my senior year, but I did. <laughs> you ran. All right. What was your specialty? I'm 200 and 400. Oh, a little bit longer distances there. Not long, long, but <laughs> yeah, you're still flying. Okay. What would be your walk up song? My walk up song would be Alicia Keys' um, This Girl's on Fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. This podcast is brought to you by Brewer of Hope. Brewer of Hope is a nonprofit that supports medically fragile children. If you'd like to make a tax deductible donation, you can use Venmo at Brewer Hope or online at BrewerofHope.org. For a replay of this episode or previous episodes, visit CoachesWifeLife.org and follow us on social media at Coach's Wife Life.